Hey YouTube, this is Josh Farr and you're watching an episode of How To With Josh. In this episode what we're going to do is we're going to replace the seals on my leaky faucet in the bathroom. This faucet has been leaking about a quart every three or four hours and uh, I'm tired of it. So um, I decided to go to get the parts at Lowe's and uh, spend the $1.99 plus tax in order to get this done. So I'm going to make this movie so that if you have questions about how to do it in the future, um, and if you have a delta faucet, which is what this is, then hopefully this will be helpful to you. Stay tuned, and we'll get this done. It'll take probably about 20 minutes if you were to do it outright by yourself, but as I explain some things to you about the process and why I do what I do, I think the video is going to end up being somewhere around a half an hour. So the basic tools that I'm going to use in this video are a crescent wrench, a Phillips screwdriver, and uh, a small flathead screwdriver. I'll explain why I use them and what I use them for in the video. I hope it is enjoyable and I hope that it, uh, it's helpful to you. Thanks for watching. In this segment of the video, what I'm going to do is demonstrate how to turn off the water from your water source. In my case, I have rural water and I have a ball valve that I can turn off in order to cease the flow of water into my house. I'm going to reach over here to this valve. This is the one that controls the water for my house. As you can see, this handle is parallel to the pipe. Being parallel to the pipe means that the water is turned on. What I need to do is make this handle perpendicular to the pipe. Alright, so the next step we're going to do, after having shut off the water to the house, is we're going to open, open the valves. That one's open. I don't know if you heard that sucking sound. And we've opened this one as well. So, the reason we did that is because we don't want the water to that, that was pressurized at some point in this. We don't want that water to squirt out and make a mess. Okay, so the third thing we we're supposed to do um, after we get the water turned off to the house and we get the pressure relieved from the supply line as we close the drain. Pull the knob up and it should take the drain down. Make sure that's it's down. That plunger being down will prevent um, screws and or gaskets and or springs from going down the drain and uh, make your life a lot easier. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to take <clears throat> this cap and this cap off of the faucet knobs. So inside each of these knobs there is a Phillips head screw that holds the knob to the stem. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my Phillips head screwdriver and I'm going to loosen the screw so that the knob will come off the valve stem. So let's get this where the camera can see it. Okay. So that's the knob. You can see the Phillips head screw in there. So I'm going to set that off to the side. And we will repeat the process. And again, see the Phillips head screw in there. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take my crescent wrench and I'm going to adjust it to the proper size. And I 
took that nut off. And we'll set that off to the side as well. So. And we'll loosen this nut as well. Okay, looks like that's finger tight. Okay, so in order to get the valve stems out, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the knob and I'm going to place that back on the stem. So I'm going to refasten the screw and then I'm going to hold this and pull up. Okay. So, as you can see, that pulled the stem out as well. That saved me having to fight with, with pulling the stem out by hand. It made it a whole lot easier. Okay, so, as with everything, you take it off, you set it to the side. Okay, so we fastened that screw, and we will gently pull this up, and you can see that other valve stem came out as well. And we'll take our Phillips head, and we'll unscrew the screw, and we'll set that valve stem off to the side as well. Alright, so now that we have the valve stems out, we're going to get the um, gaskets out that, that are causing the problem. Okay, now that we have the valve stems out, what we're going to do is examine and look for gaskets that are visibly worn. Alright. This gasket here looks like it's still seated okay. And there is another gasket inside. I don't know if you'll be able to see that very well, but there is one. Um, and at least by the feel, it feels like it's snug still. So I may replace both of these gaskets. But I haven't quite decided yet. Okay. There are some gaskets and some springs inside each of these holes. In order to retrieve those, what I'm going to attempt is to slide my screwdriver in and then pull back out. Alright, so this seal and this spring, I believe, are the culprits. I believe this is what is preventing the um, the water from turning off totally. So what I'm going to do for sure is replace the spring and that seal. And I'm going to attempt to pull this other one out the same way. So 
So again, seal, and the spring. So I know I want to replace those. And I think that's where I'm going to leave it, is, is replacing those for right now. The rest of the valves, uh, at least the rest of the components, still feel very snug. And I am willing to take a chance that that's uh, all that needs to be replaced. So I went to Lowe's tonight on my way home, and I picked up this uh, set of seals and springs for my Delta faucet. Um, these are not Delta made, but they're compatible. And so I'm going to open these. And I'll show you them close up. Alright, so here are the contents of that kit. These four items go for one particular model of faucet. And these four items go for a different selection of models for the of faucet. So we're going to set these aside because they will not be used and I will use these but just to make sure we're going to compare the new items with the old items all right so this is a set of the old items And these are the new. Now this spring looks like it's extended a little bit further. It hasn't been as compressed as what the old spring is. But I will attribute that to age and wear and tear. So go ahead and discard these. Assemble these, the new ones. And I really like my screwdriver trick very well, so we're going to try this again. We're going to try that for reassembly. All right. So, it's seated, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my small flathead screwdriver and hold the uh, the new gaskets in place while I pull up the screwdriver. And the new set, I'm going to go ahead and assemble them and do the same process. Now you'll want to make sure that these uh, gaskets and springs are seated properly. You want to make sure, I'll use the screwdriver handle here because it's big. You want to make sure that they're in properly as opposed to on their edge and being pushed in a way that they shouldn't be. Okay, and now that we have the seals and the springs seated, we're going to start the reassembly process. I'll take a valve stem and I'll put it back. Put the other valve stem back. And then put this nut back on. This one on and tighten them down.
Now the process of tightening or loosening these nuts would have been easier had I had a socket. But my socket is a couple sizes too small. My largest socket is a couple sizes too small for this. So I was set to use the uh, crescent wrench instead. Okay, so now that we have the valve stems tightened back in, I'm going to go ahead and put the knobs back on the faucet. Okay, both of those are seated, so we'll go ahead and Tighten them down. Make sure when you tighten this stuff down, you just tighten it snug, especially with these knobs. All right. Knobs turn. Put these caps back on. So the next thing we do is we'll go downstairs and turn the water back onto the house. And after we get done turning the water on downstairs, we'll come back up here and check to see if the faucet still drips. Now that the repair to the faucet is complete, we need to test to see if there is still a leak. What we're going to do now is we're going to turn the water supply back on to the house. Just as we did to turn the water supply off, we are going to rotate the handle on the ball valve. As you can see, it is perpendicular with the line at the moment. That means that the water supply is turned off. I'm going to turn this to where the handle is parallel with the pipe. That means the water can flow through that all right, now that the water is turned on, what we're going to do is we'll open the, uh, the drain and we will turn the water on. We'll, turn the, we'll start with the hot water. And we'll turn it off. And it does not appear to drip. We'll do the same with the cold water. And that does not appear to drip either. So, I'm going to call this fixed. And in order to test it though, for sure, what I'm going to do is place a high-tech one quart Chinese food soup uh, container underneath this and we'll see if uh, this collects any drips overnight. 